In Boston, Dr. Daniel Ellsberg, the man named as the source of the Pentagon copy that appeared in the New York Times, turned himself in today to federal authorities. David Culhane reports. Even if the FBI had wanted to arrest him outside the courthouse this morning, they probably couldn't have done it. Ellsberg was walled off by a mob of newsmen and supporters as he admitted that he was indeed the man who brought the Pentagon Papers to the press and congressional leaders. In the fall of 1969, I took the responsibility on my own initiative of delivering to the chairman the Foreign Relations Committee of the U.S. Senate OR the information contained in the so-called Pentagon Papers including the several studies on negotiations which have not been given to any newspaper. I could only regret that I had not at that same time released that information to the American public through the newspapers. I have now done so. I can no longer cooperate in concealing this information from the American public. I did this clearly at my own jeopardy, and I am prepared to answer to all the consequences of these decisions. That includes the personal consequences to me and my family. And whatever these may be, they can't, after all, be more serious than the ones that I and millions of other Americans have risked before this in the service of our country. Dr. Ellsberg, you have any concern about the possibility of going to prison for this? Wouldn't you go to prison to tell some this war? Ellsberg was tense but composed. His attorneys protested the government request for $100,000 bail. Ellsberg himself assured the court he would appear whenever and wherever asked. The court chose to believe him. In effect, he did not have to pay bail. He was released to prepare his defense against charges of espionage. David Culhane, CBS News, Boston. Later today in Los Angeles, federal grand jury returned an indictment against Ellsberg. He's charged with unauthorized possession of government documents and theft of government property. With a lot of attendant pomp, the much discussed and apparently widely read but still classified Pentagon documents were turned over to Congress today and Bruce Morton reports. The Pentagon Papers drama changed abruptly into the Pentagon Papers media freakout and cameraman's farce as the documents arrived at the Senate, escorted by two army men, met by Capitol Police and a horde of cameras. Like dirty books, the papers came in plain brown paper wrappers, though with top secret labels. Cameras clicked and whirred, and the procession reached Senate President Alan Ellender's office where more cameras waited. A lot of people yelled stage directions, and Ellender, looking like the man who held the winning ticket at a charity fundraiser, unwrapped his unlikely door prize. Everybody laughed a lot. Senate leaders Hugh Scott and Mike Mansfield hovered shyly in the background. Ellender explained that only senators could read the papers, but that he at least wouldn't have time to. The Army men kept their cool, giving reporters only name, rank, and hometown. He won't even touch him. <laughs> you see, it says top secret information. Cover sheet. Now, where is Mr. Ellsberg? <laughs> I hope he's in the jail. <laughs> uh, they'll be delivered in a, in, a, in a safe place, and this safe was uh, examined by me as well as by the uh, intelligence, and they're satisfied. Do you really think of a hundred men who make their living, living by talking, you know, politicians, that these are going to stay secret very long up here? Well, if I'm the judge from past experience, the answer is no. <laughs> the papers went to the Senate Secretary's office to be locked in a safe. Two senators looked at them this afternoon. They can read them but not take notes. Bruce Morton, CBS News, Capitol Hill.